the Secret Service made certain no authority in Dallas had an opportunity to examine the bullet damage to Kennedy's car. The Secret Service also usurped Dallas authority and removed the Kennedy limousine from Parkland Hospital and flew that limousine back to Washington, D.C. For over a decade, researcher Doug Weldon, a professor of criminal justice and an attorney, has studied Kennedy's limousine and what happened to it in the hours after the assassination. Just as the president's body in an autopsy could have given us many answers, a thorough study of that limousine at that time without evidence being tampered with would also have given us many important answers as to what really happened. But on arrival in Washington, damage to the limousine was noted. Charles Taylor Jr., the Secret Service agent who had accompanied Samuel Kinney in driving the vehicle to the White House garage from Andrews Air Force Base, noted in his report that of particular significance, just left to center of the windshield was a small hole from which it appeared that bullet fragments had been removed. Nick Prentzpe, a United States Police Park officer, also had an opportunity to take a look at the vehicle while it was in the White House garage. He noted that there was a small hole in the windshield, and based upon his many years of experience as a police officer, he noted that that hole had been caused by a bullet. Over the ensuing days, the car was scrutinized in the White House garage by a number of people. But one day was different. If one examines the White House garage logs, it is very interesting that in the late evening of November 24th, 1963, and the entire day of November 25th, 1963, not one person is listed as having come in to the White House garage to have any contact with the limousine. Rumors circulated at the time, always denied, that the presidential car was secretly flown from Washington to the Ford Motor Company in Dearborn, Michigan, for the removal of its damaged windshield. It is very clear that the only mode of transportation that could have been used to transport the limousine from Washington, D.C. to the Dearborn plant would have been via airplane. There are several airports in the Detroit area. It would have been a simple matter to transport the limousine under cover to its final destination, the Ford Motor Company's Rouge plant. 